Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Loretta Young and Miriam Hopkins in The Old Maid. And as our special guest, Miss Zoe Akins, author of The Old Maid. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we bring you the drama of a strange masquerade. The story of a woman who remade herself for the eyes of the world, who suppressed forever the yearnings of a great heart and lived a magnificent lie. Charlotte Lovell was called an old maid, but tonight we reveal her romantic secret. We go back to the days when she was young and beautiful and discover the reason for the deliberate sacrifice that her life became. The old maid is an intimate play, so intimate that it could never have been written by a man. It reveals too great a knowledge of the feminine mind and heart. And to this knowledge, Miss Zoe Akins, who adapted the play from a story by Edith Wharton, brought a deep human sympathy which gave her characters a universal appeal on both stage and screen. The Old Maid was a Pulitzer Prize drama on Broadway and recently became a memorable Warner Brothers picture. In studying the script for the first time, it occurred to me that the term Old Maid is gradually passing from use. Today we have bachelor girls and single women, but few old maids. Perhaps that's because the words denote a rather drab appearance. And nowadays a dull drab appearance is old-fashioned when a help like Lux toilet soap is available. In tonight's play, the roles of Charlotte Lovell and her cousin Delia are of equal prominence, which presented an unusual casting problem. We needed two actresses who could be convincing both as girls of 20 and women of middle age. And we needed stars who were willing to appear unsympathetic at times for the sake of the play. And we found them in Loretta Young and Miriam Hopkins. And now we begin a story as old as the human race and as new as the sacrifice some mother must have made today. The Old Maid, starring Loretta Young as Charlotte and Miriam Hopkins as Delia. The curtain rises on Act One. <laughs> In the past hundred years, the tempo of life has quickened and the ideas of a century past have been laid aside with the quaint dress and customs of their day. But one great ritual has remained almost constant, the wedding. Then as now, with the same hurried attention to last-minute details, then as now, the bride waited in her room, waited for the knock on the door which would summon her to her bridesmaids and the groom. The year is 1833. Our bride, in a lovely old-fashioned wedding gown, turns this way and that in front of her mirror, while her maid smooths out the lacy folds of the long white veil. You don't seem a bit nervous, Miss Delia. Nervous? Oh, no, I don't think I am. I wish I wasn't. I wouldn't be so clumsy. <laughs> Land, you'd think it was me getting married. Me, me hand shakes so. Oh, take your time, Nora. We've still a few moments. You was always one to take things calm. You're not superstitious either, are you, Miss oh, Delia? not very. All the same, you're to have something borrowed and something blue. I know, something old and something new. Well, my lace is old and everything else is new. But I've nothing borrowed and I've nothing blue. I'd feel easier in my mind if you had. <laughs> oh, Nora, then you'll have to lend me something. But what if I got missed that you'd wear? Now, let me see. A garter. Lend me a garter. Gracious. Do you mean it, Miss Steele? Yes, of course. Why not? Well... Please to look the other way, then. <laughs> Go ahead. I don't see you, Nora. Delia, may I come in? It's your cousin, miss. Charlotte. Oh, of course, Charlotte. I have something for you, Delia. Oh, how pretty you look. <laughs> I never saw you look so well. Did you, Nora? No, miss. I could hardly believe me eyes. It must be the dress. No, why, of course it's the dress, Nora. I don't often have a dress that's been made especially for me. Here's the garter, Miss Delia. Thank you. This is something borrowed, Charlotte. You haven't anything blue I could carry, have you? It's odd you should ask me that, Delia. Here. This is blue. What is it? A cameo. It's a present for you, Delia. A present? From whom? From Clem Spender. Clem Spender? Here we go, Nora. Yes, Miss. Charlotte, tell me. He asked me to give it to you. But I thought Clem was in Italy. He came home today, just in time for your wedding. He hadn't heard you were going to marry someone else, Delia. He thought you must be ill because you'd stopped writing. Oh, Charlotte, I'm afraid. Of what? Of Clem. 
Clem. Of what he might say or do. Oh, you know Clem. There'll be champagne, and if he should take a glass too much, oh, watch him, Charlotte, will you? And be, be kind to him. I don't see how anyone could ever be unkind to Clem. Oh, don't. Please don't. Why, oh, I didn't know you cared that much. You knew I loved him. I knew you told him so. Why, oh, I must cry. No, no, you won't cry. You won't cry if you keep saying to yourself over and over, I'm marrying a Ralston. I am marrying Jim Ralston. Oh, yes, I'm marrying a Ralston, and I'm glad. Yes. You know, you know, dearly, when Clem went to Italy to study painting, you promised to wait for I him. I did wait. I waited almost two years. If Clem wanted a wife, he should have stayed here and made something of himself. Oh, Delia, why didn't you have the kindness, at least, to, to write to Clem that you were going to marry someone else? I intended to. I, oh, I, I tried to. But you were ashamed. No. No, I wasn't ashamed. I, oh, I'm fond of Jim, and it seemed so hopeless to wait for Clem. I couldn't bear to be an old maid, Charlotte. I shall be an old maid. Because the man I love doesn't love me, and not for any other reason. Charlotte. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't know there was anyone. No one has ever known. But I would have waited for him all my life. You think so, but life doesn't stop. Oh, a woman gets lonely. She wants children and a home of her own. I could have waited. Oh, there's the wedding march, Delia. Yes. I'm ready. All right. Remember, watch Clem. Oh, I'll not forget. Here's your present. Something blue. Oh, Charlotte, I'm trembling so. And what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. I now pronounce you man and wife. Nora, Nora. Oh, wasn't she beautiful, Miss Charlotte? Nora, where is Mr. Spender? Where did he go? Why, through the hall, Miss, toward the balcony. Oh, thank you, Nora. Clem. Oh, Clem. She seemed very happy, didn't she? Yes. Well, why not? She's married to a fine person and rich. We mustn't forget that, must we? The Ralston millions. How important they must be to her. Oh, Clem, please don't. Oh, don't pity me, Charlotte. I don't want pity. I'm glad. Because you don't need pity, Glenn. If Delia wanted the things that, well, Jim Ralston could give her, if she wanted them more than she wanted you, you, you could never have been happy, could you? I might have been. I might have made her happy, too. Why didn't she give me the chance? Oh, Clem. What will you do now? Do? Go back to Italy, I suppose. There's a packet sailing next week. Oh, is that wise? I, I mean, to go off alone? You shouldn't be alone now, Clem. You should have friends around you now. <laughs> Someone who could, well, help you forget, perhaps. Who? Well, I could try, Clem, if you'd let me. What? Oh, I'd like to try. Oh, Charlotte. Oh, please. You... Please don't look at me like that. Don't make me feel ashamed of myself, Clem. Oh, Charlotte, forgive me. You're so very sweet. And you could help. I'm sure you could. Oh, Clem. <laughs> Excuse me, let me through, please. Just a moment, lady. All visitors are ashore. Yes, I know. We're sailing in ten minutes. I know. I'm a passenger. Oh, oh good evening. Go right aboard. Oh, thank you. Mind that hoist. We're loading in a bit of a hurry, ma'am, and it's dark. I'll be careful. Clear the decks there. Do you want someone hurt? Move along now, miss. The tide's with us. Shop in the hour. Clem. Oh, Charlotte. I was afraid oh. you weren't going to make it. Well, I had to wait till they were all asleep. Charlotte. Yes. Are you quite sure you're not sorry? Oh, no, my darling. I'll never be sorry. <laughs> well, I'll let you unpack your things. Right. I'll be out on deck. Uh, Clem. Yes? Clem, I must write a note to Aunt Carrie. Oh, of course. I'll have a boy come to pick it up. All right. Goodbye for a while, darling. 
Clem. Hmm? Kiss me. Oh, Charlotte. Mm. <laughs> Goodbye, sweetheart. My dear Aunt Carrie, perhaps someday I may be forgiven for what I am doing. I love Clem Spender. I have always loved him. And I must try to make up for the hurt he has suffered. I believe I can. By the time you receive this, we shall be far at sea. Please tell Delia. Explain to her that... Oh, yes? Who is it? First mate, ma'am. Oh, come in, please. Sorry. Are you Mrs. Spender? Why, I... Is anything the matter? Quiet, men. Quiet. Well, what is it, please? Mrs. Spender, there has been an accident. What? It was unavoidable, ma'am. The boom swung fast. It was dark as pitch up there, and, well, I guess he didn't see it. Clem, where is he? Is he hurt badly? Oh, please, ma'am. Well, tell me, please. Ma'am, your husband's dead. Dead? I'm sorry, ma'am. No. No. Clem! Clem! Dr. Lanskill is here, Miss Delia. Dr. Lanskill. How are you, Doctor? Good morning, my dear, and many happy returns of the day. Oh, thank you, Doctor. And many happy returns from me, too, Miss Delia. And thank you, Nora. Miss Delia, Miss Delia, I've been married exactly six years, and Nora still can't get used to it. <laughs> Perhaps because you're still as lovely as a bride, Miss Delia. Oh, Doctor, sit down. I'm so glad you've come. You seem to be looking quite well. Oh, it wasn't for me. I wanted to speak to you about Charlotte. Oh. What's the matter with Charlotte? Well, I don't know. Perhaps nothing, but... Doctor, you know she's going to marry Jim's brother next month. Of course. Why? Well, I've been Jim Ralston's wife for six years. When Charlotte becomes a Ralston, she'll learn that they're very exacting about some things. Go on. Doctor, is there any reason why Charlotte shouldn't marry Joseph Ralston? None whatever, so far as I know. I'm talking about her health. You remember about five years ago, she took a trip south. She was gone almost a year. Yes, uh, lung fever. Yes. Oh, but you may take my word, Delia. There's no danger of a recurrence. Charlotte is perfectly well. Oh, thank you, Doctor. I am relieved. But I thought she was looking badly lately, and I was afraid. Well, I imagine it was just overwork. I don't see why she does it, really. You mean the nursery? Yes, taking a lot of strange children for charity's sake. Seems to me they'd be better off at their homes. Perhaps, but she's doing a fine work, Delia, and she likes children. You go there often, don't you? Yes, I'm going today, as a matter of fact. Charlotte asked me if I'd drop by and look at one of her little girls. Doctor, do you suppose she'll miss it after she's married? Miss the nursery? Because she'll have to give it up, of course. Joseph will insist. Will he? <laughs> if I know Charlotte, my dear, she may do a little insisting herself. Well... And remember, be early tomorrow. We will. Good night, Mrs. Lovett. <laughs> Good night, dear. Good night. Good, Good night. night. Good night. Uh, Bridget. Bridget, where are you? Come in, Miss Lovell. Tina, supper's on the table now. Oh, ma thank you, Bridget. Tina, dear. Your supper's ready. I want to play. <laughs> I know you do, darling, but aren't you hungry? No, ma'am. Well, just the same. You must eat. Now run along into the kitchen. All right. That's a good girl. Bridget. Did you give Tina her milk today? Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, thank you. 
I'm afraid Tina needs more attention than the others. Yes, I noticed she was a little peaked. Well, it's not only that. She's had a cold, of course, but... Well, the chief difficulty is that she's very shy, and the other children like to tease her because... Well, because she's a foundling. May I come in? Oh, Dr. Lanskill, of course. I have brought some very distinguished guests to see you. Well, here, let me light the illuminating gas in the passage. Too late, Charlotte. Delia. Well, how nice of you to come. And Joseph. Good evening, darling. I told Delia I was stopping by to see you, and she wanted to come. Oh, not of her own free will. Oh. She's never been here before, you know. But that doesn't mean I haven't been interested, Charlotte. Of course not. Where are all the children? Oh, they must have gone by this time, haven't they, Charlotte? Well, all but one. She, uh, she, she lives here with Bridget. She lives here? Yes. Oh, may we see her? Well, I... Oh, yes, of course. Uh, Bridget, will you bring Tina in, please? Yes, ma'am. How is her cold, Charlotte? Well, I thought you might look at her, Doctor. Oh, come in, dear. This is Tina. Good evening, Tina. Don't be shy, darling. This is Mrs. Ralston, Tina. Now, what do you do? Curtsy. Oh, oh, that's oh. right. <laughs> Tina. Tina what? What's your other name, child? Clementina? No, your other name. She doesn't understand, Delia. How old are you, Clementina? You're five, dear. Five? And don't you know your parents' name, Clementina? No, she doesn't. Oh. Bridget. Bridget, you better take Tina now. Yes, ma'am. Oh, no, let her stay a moment. Do you want to stay, Tina? Yes, ma'am, I'd like to stay if you do. Well, oh, how affectionate. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I never saw a date to anybody like that before. She's very sweet, isn't she? Tina, Bridget is waiting, dear. Good night. Good night. Good night, Tina. Oh, she's a lovely child. I wouldn't worry about her cold, Charlotte. She looks much better today. Uh, Delia, I'm afraid I've got to run. Uh, can I drop you at the house? Oh, so soon. Well, if I must. Goodbye, Charlotte, dear. Goodbye, Delia, and thank you for coming. Good night, Charlotte. Good night, Doctor. Are you coming, Joseph? I'll see you later. All right. Good night. Well... Are you ready, Charlotte? To go? Oh, no, I have some things to do yet, Joseph. Oh, can't they wait, dear? I'm afraid not. Well, Charlotte, do these children need all of your time? Why, no, not all. Why? Then I should think you could spare some for me. I'm very jealous, Charlotte. Jealous of my waves? Oh, darling, you needn't be. Why, you can give me what I want most for them. What is that? Oh, your interest, your advice, your presence. My presence? Where? Here, Joe, with me. Charlotte... You're not really counting on still coming here every day after we're married. Why, certainly. It never occurred to me that I wouldn't. It never occurred to me that you would. Well, why shouldn't I? Why should you? Well, y you know, because... because of all these unfortunate children mean to me and... and all I mean to them, because it's my duty. Duty? A married woman's first duty is to her husband, her home. Joseph, you mean... because I'm making a good marriage, I... I'm supposed to get rid of these poor darlings as if they were dolls I'd finish playing with? Oh, no, I can't. I won't. You refuse? Well, they need me, Joe. And I need you. Oh, but it's not the same. I, I'd be giving them only a little part of each day. Why can't I do that? Because people might think it odd. Oh, people. That shows you're Ralston, Joe. Afraid of everything that everybody else doesn't do. Charlotte. It's not fair of you to ask me to give up these children. Very well, it's not fair, but I ask it all the same. Joseph. Let's not talk anymore. Not now. Goodbye, Joseph. Don't say that. After all, what I'm asking isn't much. You, you'll see that. I'll be waiting for you to send for me when you do see it. Tina. Tina! Did you call, ma'am? Why, I... Oh, no, I, I just wanted to see Tina to... Uh... I want to kiss her good night. Here she is, ma'am. All ready for bed. <laughs> good night, Tina. Night. Oh, my darling. My sweet little angel. Who is it? Why, Charlotte. What are you doing here at this hour? May I speak to you, Delia? For well, certainly, darling. What's the matter? Delia, I want you to help me. Help you? With Joe. Delia, he wants me to give up my children. Oh. Well, of course he does. Now, any man would. Oh, but I can't. I've told him I can't. Well, now, you must try to be sensible, Charlotte. Whether you agree with Joe or not, you must realize you'll never have another chance like this. After all, one's own babies have the first claim. That's just it. How can I give up my own baby? Yours. 
Which of the four waifs do you call your baby? I call my baby my own baby, Delia. Your own? Yes, my little girl, Tina. No. Yes, she's mine. She's mine, Delia. Charlotte. Oh, my <laughs> poor darling. Oh, Charlotte. Tell me everything. Oh, what do you want me to tell you? That's all you need to know. You, you love someone. <laughs> oh, my poor Charlotte. I can't give up my own baby, can I? No. I can't, Delia. No, no, of course not. We must think of some way. Well, Delia, if you could talk to Joseph, persuade him that no harm can come of my going on with my nursery. Oh, please, Delia. Oh, don't please. cry like that. I'll do my best to help you. Oh, Delia, if only you can. If, if you could just tell Joe. No, I couldn't. He'd never forgive me no, for that, you know right. that. You couldn't tell him, of course. Charlotte, when was it? When you went south that time? Yes, Dean. Then Dr. Lanskill knew, didn't he? Yes. Yes, he was very kind to me. But he can't help me now. You're the only one I could turn to, Oh, Dean. if I only knew what to do. If there was only something I... Well, Charlotte, we're talking as if... as if there weren't someone else to consider. Tina's father. Does he know? No. You never told him. Well, I couldn't. Why? Why, darling, you... Because he's dead. Dead? Yes. Charlotte, don't you want to tell me who it was? Oh, what does it matter, Delia? You wouldn't understand it. But how can I help you if you don't trust me? But haven't I told you all you need to know? How did he die? Was it six years ago? He was killed. An accident. Delia. Clem. Clem Spender. Yes. You and Clem Spender. Oh, Charlotte, how could you? When he didn't even pretend to love you. Oh, I knew you wouldn't understand. Oh. I shouldn't have told you, dear. No, I don't understand. Hadn't you any pride at all? Well, you needn't be so contemptuous. Oh. I've never been sorry. Not really sorry, Delia. Now you've come to me. Well, what do you expect me to do? Oh, have you forgotten so soon that you were going to help well, me? Well, what can I do? Do you think you can marry Joe with a thing like that on your conscience? But what he doesn't know, what nobody knows can't hurt him, Delia. Oh. And I'll make up for it in other ways. Oh, he won't be sorry he married me. But you don't love him as much as you love Clem Spender. Well, I... I love him differently, perhaps. As you love Jim. Oh. Differently. And I need Joe's love. Well, I... I don't know what to say. I... I can't think. You must give me time. No, there is no time, Delia. I must decide now, tonight, and I can't think either. Oh, please, Delia, do something. Whatever you do, you can't make things worse. Well, whatever happens... Yes, you'll have to trust me. Leave it entirely in my hands. To do as I think best. Yes. Yes, I, I trust you, dear. Uh -huh. That was the first act of the old babe. Act two sets the course that determines the rest of Charlotte's life. But during this intermission, Mr. Ruick has a short presentation for you. Before our stars, Loretta Young and Miriam Hopkins, return in act two of The Old Maid, let's hear what our trio have on their minds this evening. Hello, Mr. Ruick. What's on your mind? Hello, girls. Well, first of all, I've been wanting to ask you what it was you were humming just before the show tonight. Oh, everyone's humming it, Mr. Ruick. It's called In an 18th Century Drawing Room. Oh, yes. It's a very romantic song about two old-fashioned lovers. The man in silk and lace and the girl. Yes, the girl. What was she like? Well, here is one thing that we know. This lovely girl of long ago must have had a smooth complexion. It is natural to assume, for she was enchanting in that 18th century drawing room. He was in love with her, and it's the same today. Gentlemen still prefer beautiful skin, they say. Nothing else can compare, no other charm can win, and you'll have charm to spare. If you have lovely skin. Why, girls, you've turned the description of a beautiful girl in an 18th century drawing room 
right into a message to girls in 20th century living rooms. Well, we want to remind them how lucky they are to have swift, easy complexion care. We want to be sure they appreciate Lux Toilet Soap. Most women do, because Lux Toilet Soap is real beauty soap. It makes your skin feel so much softer and smoother. That's because Lux Toilet Soap Active Lather removes every bit of dust and dirt that might otherwise remain to choke your pores. Active Lather gives you the protection of perfect cleansing, and every woman knows how important that is to complexion beauty. Don't take any chances on losing your complexion appeal. Use the soap that nine out of ten famous Hollywood stars use every day. And never forget that three-minute Lux Toilet Soap complexion care at bedtime. Smooth, soft skin is so important to your appearance. Your charm. Why don't you decide now to get three cakes of gentle white Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow? Our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of The Old Maid, starring Miriam Hopkins as Delia and Loretta Young as Charlotte with Helen Wood as Tina. Only a few minutes have passed. Shocked and jealous at the news that Tina is the child of Charlotte and Clem Spender, Delia is determined to break up the marriage. Downstairs in the dim candlelight of the drawing room, she faces Joseph Ralston, but cannot bring herself to tell him the truth. Perhaps in her place, Joseph, I'd feel exactly as she does. And since it seems to be a matter of deciding between you and the children, well, I don't see what you can do if she chooses them. If she chooses them, it's because she thinks she's doing what is right. In that case, I must be the one to give in. Joseph, you mean you've decided that Charlotte's to do exactly as she likes in this matter? Exactly as she likes, so long as she doesn't overtax her strength. And I'm going to tell her so at once. No. It's no use. What? It's no use. You were talking just now about her health. I tell you, Charlotte can't marry you. She can't marry anyone. I don't understand you. Charlotte's ill. She's coughing again. You know what that means. She can't marry anyone, I tell you. Ill? But why? Why wasn't I told at once? Well, because... Because... Uh, well, such things aren't easy to tell. Charlotte, ill. Good evening. Fine concert tonight, Delia. You should have been there. Is uh, something wrong? Dr. Lansko. Yes? When Charlotte went south five years ago... It was for lung fever, wasn't it? Oh, I thought everyone knew that, Joe. That disease is in her family, isn't it? Well, everyone knows that, too. Why do you ask? Suppose she began coughing again. Oh, has she coughed? What would it mean? It would be a very bad sign, of course. That's all. Good night. What did he mean, Delia? He's not going to marry her. But I... I don't understand Dr. this. Dr. Lanskill, Charlotte didn't go south because of her health. I know why she went. That's why she mustn't marry Joe. Who decided that? I did. With or without her consent? Without. You've taken a great deal on yourself, Delia. You think I've done wrong? I think it's a sacrilegious thing to lay so much as a finger on another person's destiny. But she came to me herself to beg me to help her so she wouldn't have to give up her child. This was the only way. And I can make it up to her. I'll take the baby into my own home. Delia... And Charlotte, too. We'll have a proper home here. Clem Spender's child must have every advantage. Clem Spender's child. I what? think I understand. Good oh. night. Dr. Lanskill. Yes? You're right. I've done a sacrilegious thing. Deliberately. The wisest of us make mistakes, my dear. And oh. Sometimes we never learn whether or not they were mistakes. I hope. Yours wasn't. Delia. Delia, did you speak to Joseph? Charlotte, you can't marry Joe, can you, and keep little Tina? Well, not keep her with me, no, but... Uh... Oh, Delia. You're trying to tell me I must give her up. I promised to help you, didn't I? But I didn't promise that you should marry Joe, too. Well, I've done the best I could. You and little Tina shall be together always. But, Joe, you didn't... You didn't tell him, did you? I couldn't bear that. What did you tell him? That you were coughing again. 
Oh, did you? Well, I had to tell him something. If you were to keep the child, the engagement had to be broken. So you frightened him away. I see. He's dreadfully unhappy, but he accepts your decision. My decision? Well, mine, then. And if I don't accept your decision, what if I tell him the truth? What if he should say he'd forgive me? If there'd been any hope of that, would you have come to me? Oh, give up these foolish thoughts, Charlotte, and try to realize what it's going to mean to be with your child always. That's what you wanted most, isn't it? Well, yes, but I... Well, I've done what I could. I've spoken to Jim about it. You are to come here. You and Tina. Here? In this house? Yes. Oh. But not as her mother. Well, that would be impossible. She must never know. You realize that, don't you? Yes. Yes, I do. Don't, don't shout. <laughs> don't. Everything will be all right. Oh, I promise you. You understand me? Tina must have the best of schooling. The very best. Uh, certainly, Mrs. Ross. She must be treated as my own daughter. Of course. Of course. Paris, London, and Rome. I think that's sufficient for Miss Tina's first trip abroad. It will do nicely, Mr. Harvey. Thank you. Nora, you've forgotten one of the candles on Miss Tina's birthday cake. Why, oh, she'd never forgive me, oh, Mum. No. Eighteen, of course. <laughs> ah, Tina plays beautifully, doesn't she? Charlotte, did you hear me? Yes, Doctor. I was saying, Tina plays very well. Yes, she does. But you'll be late for the ball unless you start soon. You know, when you consider how pleasant life is in this house, you must feel a deep satisfaction in having managed to give Tina such a home. If Tina's life has been pleasant in this house, it's Delia who's made it so, not I. She calls Delia mother. Oh, we won't talk of your own sacrifices for the child, Charlotte. But Delia's done her best, too. Her best to spoil her from the day Jim died 12 years ago. There's nothing now, nothing at all that Tina doesn't have or can't have. I ask him for it. Oh, well, I must be going. Doctor, you're leaving? Yes, Delia, I have a patient to see on my way home. Good night, Doctor. Oh, Tina, oh, let me see you. <laughs> you're very beautiful tonight. We're going to a ball. Uh, Dr. Lanskill, you know Lanning. Oh, of course. Well, how do you do, sir? May I help you with your coat? Oh, thank you. Well, good night, all. Good, good night, night. Tina? Yes, Aunt Charlotte. Tina, the carriage has been waiting for 20 minutes, and horses don't like standing on a cold night like this. They're going now, Charlotte. Yes, we're just going. It doesn't matter if we're late at a ball. It's not unbecoming to anyone to make a habit of being on time. <laughs> I know. The early bird catches the worm. Take care of the pennies, and the pounds will take care of themselves. <laughs> <laughs> Tina, I see nothing to laugh at. People who have no regard for punctuality usually have no regard for other things. Aunt Charlotte. Please, must you always find fault with me? You're not perfection, my child. I know I'm not perfect. Tina, but... dear, you'd better go. Uh, I'll, I'll wait outside, Tina. Very well. Oh, Mother, I wish you were coming too. But this is a young people's ball, darling. You're young, Mother, and oh. Aunt Charlotte doesn't mind being alone. Tina, please. Mother, do you like my hair like this? Lanning said it's lovely. I hope everyone likes it. Tina, why must you always think that people are interested in you? Why shouldn't I? Aren't they? My dear, what will people think of you if you talk like that? Just what she deserves, probably. Mother, tell Aunt Charlotte to stop finding fault Tina, with me. Tina! Tina! Someone must find fault sometimes. You think Mother spoils me, but she doesn't. Oh. It's just that she understands me. Why, you don't. Tina, Mother don't knows what it to is to be young and have everyone fond of her. Why, Please. you... Now go. Good night, Mother. Good night. And don't be too late. I suppose you felt you had to scold Tina because of the way she spoke to me. I wanted to realize what it is to be respectful. <laughs> she thinks I can't understand her because she considers me an old maid. Shut Yes, a ridiculous, narrow-minded old maid. What else can she ever think of? Oh, my dear. Oh, you needn't pity me. She's really mine. I, I do scold her. But I don't want to be hard on her. As it is, I always practice what I'm going to say to her if it's anything important. So I'll sound like an old maid aunt talking and not a mother. I know, Charlotte. I know. Delia, have you noticed that Tina has changed? Changed? Since when? How? 
since Lanning Halsey has been coming here so often. It's very natural for him to come often. He's very much in love with her. Yes. But do you dislike him? I mean, as a husband for Tina. Tina cannot afford to pick and choose. But there's nothing against Lanning, is there? Except that he seems uncertain as to his choice of a profession. Uncertainty about a profession may cause uncertainty about other things, too. I don't understand you, Charlotte. He hasn't asked Tina to marry him. How could he? He earns nothing, and his allowance will be stopped if he marries against his parents' wishes. Oh, but Charlotte, you... Unfortunately, Delia, my girl has no fortune and no name. And have to be careful, Mother, we know, has warned her son against becoming interested. But after all, Tina's happy with us. She doesn't need to marry anyone. Tina, an old maid? Never! My child shall have her life. Oh, Charlotte, why do you twist my words? I mean, the Tina's young. She isn't 20 yet. She can wait. No. We've waited long enough. What are you thinking of, Charlotte? What are you going to do? I don't know. You'd better go to bed, Delia. There's no need in both of us waiting up for her, and it's my duty, not yours. Very well. Good night, Charlotte. Good night. She'll come home late. Probably walk through the snow. What, Tina? You walked home with Lenny. Why, you imprudent child in this wet snow. You shouldn't do these things, Tina. You were always a delicate child. Do you know how late it is? Tina. Shh. You must go, Lenny. Not yet. No one's about. This is very wicked of us. Is it? Why? I don't know. Oh, Lanning, I loved it. The snow and the moonlight and icy trees in the square. And being with you at last all alone. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm taking off your wet slippers. I loved it, too. But I should have better taken better care of you just the same. Oh, silly. Now for the other foot. Both little feet have to be warm or little Tina may be ill. Oh, Tina. What if you should die? You won't, will you? Promise not to. Oh, Lenny, you silly. Tina. Oh, darling. Tina. That's the first time. And I shall never kiss anyone but you. Ever. Tina. Aunt Charlotte. Do you know what time it is? Oh, I, I'm sorry, Miss Lovell. I, I was speaking to Tina. Aunt Charlotte, stop. Tina. Oh, Mother. I've not been able to sleep. I heard you come in. It's late. I know. I'm sorry. You'd better go now, Lanny. Yes, Mrs. Ralston. Don't scold him. This is Tina's fault, not his. Any boy would have done the same as she'd permitted no, him. No, no, it's not her fault. Delia, tell him not to come here again. It's your house or I'd tell him myself. Aunt Charlotte, take that back. Mother, tell Lanny he's to come when he wants to. Tell him, Mother. It is your house, not hers. Don't bother, Mrs. Ralston. I'm going away soon in a week, probably. So it doesn't matter very much whether I'm forbidden this door or not. I'd only have come again to say goodbye in any case. Goodbye? I... I'm sorry, Tina. Lanning! You see? You see what she's done, Mother? She's driven Lanning away. Oh, no, my child. I've not driven him away. If he's not coming here again, it's because he finds it awkward when he has no intention of marrying a girl who is so free with her kisses. That's not true. That's not true. You know it's true. Your aunt's right, Tina. If Lanning goes, it's because he doesn't care as much for you as you think. But he would have cared if she'd not driven him away. I'd have made him care, and now I can't. Now he's gone, and I'll never forgive her, never. Tina. I won't. You've no business to meddle, Aunt Charlotte. Go to your room, Tina. I'm going, but before I do, she's got to know that I'm sick of her fault-finding and her spying and her meddling. Oh, <laughs> you can say what you please to me, Mother, because you understand me and I love you, but she's only a sour old maid who hates me because Tina, I'm stop. young and attractive and alive while she's... Old and hideous and dried up and has never known anything about love. I won't have her interfering with my life, I tell you. I won't have it! <laughs> oh. Shut I'm so terribly sorry. This has gone on long enough. I see my mistake now and I mean to remedy it. Your mistake? You've been good to us, Delia. But I understand my duty now. If I am to save my child, I must take her away. Charlotte, what are you saying? I must take Tina away from here. 
We must go somewhere where we're not known. Where we shall live among plain people leading plain lives. Where she can find herself a husband and make herself a home. You take Tina away from me now. Oh, I'm not ungrateful, Delia. I... Oh, don't speak of gratitude. What does it matter whether you're grateful or not? It's Tina I'm thinking of. Of course it's Tina you're thinking of. Tina and Clem Spender. You're insane, Charlotte. I've not thought of Clem Spender for years. Oh, but you have. You have, Delia. You thought of him and thinking of Tina. A woman never stops thinking of the man she loves. You can't forgive me because Clem Spender didn't quite break his heart over you. That's why you were like keeping me at your mercy and taking his child from me. And suppose that's true. She's your child, too. And to take her away now from the life you've made such a sacrifice to give, oh, that would be too cruel. Even more cruel to her than to me. What's ahead for her here, Delia? For a girl without a name or a penny among cautious people like the Halsleys and their kind? You've done all you could for her. But you see what's come of it so far. Now I... No, I've not done all I could. But I'm going to if you'll let me. I'll adopt Tina legally. Adopt her? How could that help? I'll give, I'll give her my name, the Ralston name, and my money. No, I refuse. How can you refuse? How can you sacrifice Tina's happiness to your pride? My pride? Why, what pride have I accepted my child? Then you are going to sacrifice her when she might have everything she wants, even Lanning Halsey for her husband. It's just as she said. He will love her if she wants him to. And if she has money of her own in my name, why, the Halseys wouldn't dare find her a bad match for their son. Charlotte, give her this chance. What mother wouldn't? If Lanning takes her away from us both, well, it, it, it won't be like really giving her up. Couldn't we just go on loving her together? Oh, couldn't we, Charlotte? Mother, are you coming up? I've been waiting for you. Charlotte. Go up to her. You're her mother now. Curtain falls on the second act of The Old Maid. But the love Charlotte feels for her child cannot be denied so easily, as we see in a moment when our stars return for Act Three. Right now, here's a gentleman with a brief and pointed message. Miriam Hopkins, Loretta Young, and Helen Wood will be back in a moment for the third act of The Old Maid. But before they do, I'd like to tell you about some conversational bridge that I overheard the other day. Conversational bridge? Why, what's that, Mr. Rui? Well, my wife was having a bridge party. But the ladies didn't seem to be playing cards. Of course, I'm crazy about Irene Dunn. Did you see her in When Tomorrow Comes? She always looks so pretty. Um, I'll bid a heart. I'll pass. She is lovely, but my favorite is Madeline Carroll. Wait till you see her in Honeymoon in Bali. What beautiful hair and skin, even in the close-ups. Sure bid, dear. But did Jane bid hearts or clubs? Say, for sheer gorgeousness, you want to see Joan Bennett in The Man and the Iron Mask. Can that girl wear stunning costumes? Well, anyone as good-looking as she is can wear a bungalow apron and look like a million. See here, girls, can't we just review the bidding a minute? You see, no matter where you are, you'll hear women discussing the screen stars. They admire them, often follow their lead in the kind of clothes they wear or the beauty care they use. The makers of Lux Toilet Soap take real pride in the fact that nine out of ten screen stars use Lux Toilet Soap. And they're just as proud of the fact that thousands of charming women all over the country agree with the stars that fine white Lux Toilet Soap is the right soap for their complexions. Now, here's the reason Lux Toilet Soap gives your skin such gentle, beautiful care. It has active lather that removes dust and dirt, every trace of stale cosmetics. Active lather gives your skin the protection of thorough, perfect cleansing. It isn't only screen stars who must pass close-up tests. Every woman knows that the eyes of her friends, the eyes of those who love her, notice how she looks. They notice whether her skin is smooth and clear or dull and unattractive. Use cosmetics all you wish, but don't take chances with improper, careless cleansing. Use Lux Toilet Soap regularly, every day. Make it your bedtime beauty care. You want your skin to stay smooth and lovely because it's nice to hear people say how attractive she is. Start your Lux Toilet Soap care tomorrow, won't you? We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. We 
continue with Act Three of The Old Maid. Months have gone by, and Delia's plans for Tina have borne fruit. It's June now, the evening before Tina's marriage to Lanning. In the drawing room, the last preparations for the wedding are being made. Everything's done that can be done tonight. I've been to the kitchen and I've told Melissa Grimes she'd better count on, oh, 200 plates of ice cream. I can't think of anything else. Neither can I. <laughs> Aunt Charlotte, you've been wonderful. Hasn't she, Dr. Lansko? Very, and personally, I think the only thing left is to go to bed. You must be tired, Charlotte. <laughs> the bride's the one who should be sent to bed. Say good night, Tina. Yes, Tina, you should go to bed now. But I'm not sleepy, Mother. You can rest, whether you sleep or not. Yes, you should go up now, Tina. All right, but will you come up and say good night to me, Mother? Of course. Because tonight, oh, Mother, I'm so happy. Too happy. <laughs> Too happy, dear. You know, Dr. Lansko Lanning says we've all been straws whirling around on a sunlit torrent ever since Mother adopted me and his parents said he might get married. They've been sweet to me, but if Mother hadn't cared enough for me to give me her name and the money, they'd have not wanted him to care either. Oh, nonsense. Oh, I know, Mother. I know what I owe you. I owe you everything. You know... I used to wonder who I really was, but I don't care now. I'd rather have you for my mother than anyone in the world. Oh, Tina, dear, stop chattering. I must see about the doilies. Uh, excuse me, Doctor. Of course. Tina, you mustn't run on so before you, Aunt Charlotte. She's done just as much for you as anyone. Yes. What do you think, Dr. Lansko? Aunt Charlotte gave me all her grandmother's jewels. Oh, you're a lucky girl. I've seen them. I know I am. And my wedding veil. She wanted me to wear the wedding dress that she was going to wear once, too, and didn't. It seems odd to think that anyone ever wanted to marry Aunt Charlotte. Tina, you must go off to bed. Now, hurry, dear. All the same, I won't go to sleep until you've come in and said goodnight. I told you I'll come. Now, run along. <laughs> Good night, Dr. Lansko. Good night. I must go, too. You know, I think poor Charlotte is happy at last. I hope so. Doctor... I know you thought I took too much on myself when I kept Charlotte from marrying Jewel that time. I've not forgotten what you said about meddling with another person's destiny. But I know that you've paid for your mistake, if it was a mistake. Good night, my dear. Thank you. Good night, Dr. Lansko. Delia? Yes, Charlotte? You're going up now to speak to Tina? Yes. Unless there's something you want to talk to me about first. I told her I'd go up to her. I understand. But please understand me, too, if I ask you not to. No, I don't understand you, Charlotte. Surely you realize on the night before her wedding, a girl ought to have a mother's counsel. Naturally. That's why I must be the one to talk to Tina tonight. Just tonight, I am her mother. Charlotte, you're not going to tell her that. Not now. <laughs> you hate me so much for it is all that. Hate you? Oh, what a word to use between us. It's a word that's been between us since the beginning, Delia. You hated me from the moment you knew that I was the mother of Clem Spender's child. And there's been hate between us ever since. Because his child is mine instead of yours. I realize now that you believe I've hated you because you've hated me. Hated me in spite of everything I've tried to do. Nothing was for me, Delia. It was all for Clem Spender and his child. Charlotte, our lives are over. And so is Clem Spender's. But Tina's is ahead of her. And if you love her as I love her, you couldn't stand there and talk of hatred. Not here, where the very air is filled with her happiness tonight. Oh, it's wicked of you, Charlotte. It's wicked. I'm not wicked. I wouldn't have done to you what you've done to me. From the beginning, you've deliberately divided me from my daughter. Do you suppose it's been easy all these years to hear her call you mother? You perpetually came between us. If you hadn't, she'd had no one else to turn to but me. She'd have had to love me. And that's why I can talk of hatred. That's why tonight... Just tonight, she belongs to me. And that's why I won't let her call anyone else mother. Tonight. Very well. I won't go up to her. And if you want her to know the truth about her birth, it's your right to tell her that, too. I suppose you imagine it'll be a tragedy for Tina to learn that she's my daughter. Well, we shall see. Oh. Is 
Charlotte, did you tell her? Did you? No. She's waiting for you. Charlotte. I couldn't, after all. I stood outside her door. Well, tried to think of something to say to her without... without her guessing. There's nothing I can say. You're the mother she wants. Go up to her, Delia. It's not your fault. Or mine. Oh, Charlotte. After all, she was mine when she was little. Good night, Delia. Oh, Charlotte. Tina. Come in, Mother. I've been waiting for you. Tina, do you want to do something that will make me very happy? Anything, darling. Then find your Aunt Charlotte. She's just gone to her room. And when you found her, remember this. She didn't marry a man who loved her very much and who would have given her everything she wanted because she wouldn't give you up. That's why she's no maid. Oh, why didn't anyone ever tell me that before? Well, sometimes... Sometimes people don't think. Sometimes they're selfish. But you remember. And you try to make her glad of the choice she made. Without letting her know I asked you to. And I've always been so horrid. And there's one thing more. Yes? When you go away tomorrow, at the very last moment, you understand, after you've said goodbye to me and to everyone else, just as Lanning helps you into the carriage. Yes. Lean down and give your last kiss to Aunt Charlotte. Don't forget. The very last. I won't forget. And I'll go to her now. Aunt Charlotte. Yes? Aunt Charlotte, you didn't come to say goodnight to me. No, Tina, I didn't. I thought... So that... I've come to you. Good night. And, oh, Aunt Charlotte, I'm so grateful for everything. And I love you so very, very much. Tina. Oh, Tina. Curtain falls on the third act of The Old Maid. In a moment, our stars, Loretta Young and Miriam Hopkins, are returning for a curtain call. First, however, I'd like you to meet the author of tonight's play. There are two groups of playwrights who've contributed to the vitality of the American theater. The first group is made up of those who write one successful play and are never heard from again. In the other category are those who've written not one but many hits. Writers like Zoe Akins, author of The Old Maid and our special guest tonight. At the last count, she had seen 22 of her plays produced. And there's a brand new one called Starvation on Red River, soon due on Broadway. Miss Higgins, you, you should be used to taking curtain calls by now. Unfortunately, they're not always curtain calls, Mr. DeMille. Sometimes one looks round for the closest exit and runs instead of walks. Mm -hmm. But I do remember one night, the first time I heard an audience shout, author and found myself somehow out on a stage. I don't know exactly what I said now, but it must have been something intensely original, like a thank you, not being exactly a silver-tongued orator. And I do remember also the little speech the producer made afterwards in the wings. This is wonderful, he said, if that audience is on the level. <laughs> you say you're not a silver-tongued orator, Miss Aikens. And I've noticed as far as politics and economics are concerned, you keep your characters off the stump, too. Yes, I've never <clears throat> gone in for propaganda in my plays. And that's a rare virtue. When so many dramatists are going in for propaganda instead of plays, you regard the theater solely as a place for entertainment, then? Oh, not at all. I think good entertainment is a very rare and beneficial thing. But I think the theater, to be important, must be more than merely enjoyable. A play is only important when it widens the horizon of the mind by enriching it with emotional experiences 
other than its own, and so gives light as well as pleasure. Mm. Make them laugh, make them cry, and make them remember. Hmm? Yes, make them remember if you can. What is easily forgotten doesn't count. Mm -hmm. The emphasis you place on human values in plays has made you something of an authority on feminine psychology, whether you welcome the distinction or not. I decline it with thanks. <laughs> After all, a psychologist is only a person who can guess what others feel and think. And I like to think my guess is as good about a man as about a woman. Mm. Wasn't the old maid criticized as too sentimental? That is, before the audience flocked to the box office. Yes, it was. And I don't know why, unless it's because the ladies wore hoop skirts instead of slacks. There isn't a sentimental line in the play, to my way of thinking. You know the Oxford Dictionary defines sentimental as being prone to shallow emotions. And after all, jealousy and love and hate are the strongest stuff of life. And when I first read Edith Wharton's story, I thought it was intensely modern in the way it dealt with these forces. The critic of the English Manchester Guardian said, this might well be called the story of a crime, being the story of the murder of one woman's happiness by another. And that hardly seems a sentimental tale to me. But I think I've said enough, and I know we all want to congratulate Miss Young and Miss Hopkins. And... Uh, your play, Miss Aikens, speaks a universal language. Here are, here are Loretta Young and Miriam Hopkins, no longer in the period of candlelight and carriages. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. DeMille. It's been a real adventure being here tonight. But before I go, I want to say something about the product behind this program. Candlelight and carriages may be outmoded, <coughs> but there's one American fashion that will never change, and that's the fashion of having clear, smooth complexion. And part of it is the regular use of Lux soap. I've been a Lux soap booster for a very long time now. I agree with Loretta. Lux soap is a definite help to a good complexion. Now, won't you tell us what the Lux Radio Theater play is going to be next week, Mr. DeMille? Next Monday night, we're going to present Only Yesterday. And our stars will be Barbara Stanwyck and George Brent. Only Yesterday is a love story of unusual tenderness. <laughs> a drama of a woman's love, which endured through every hardship that time and circumstance created. Everyone who likes a real love story... We'll thoroughly enjoy only yesterday. Oh, that's a beautiful play and a fine cast, Mr. DeMille. Good night, and thank you again. Good night, Loretta. And it's also been a great pleasure to have you with us, Miriam. Thank you, Mr. DeMille. I've enjoyed it, too. Good night. Good night. That's a fine acting we heard tonight. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night. And the Lux Radio Theater presents Barbara Stanwyck and George Brent in Only Yesterday. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. This is Melville Wood inviting you to enjoy the increasingly popular Lux Daytime program, The Life and Love of Dr. Susan. In today's episode, Dr. Susan helped perform a delicate operation on her own son. Tomorrow... She will learn the startling result. Listen then. For the time and station, see your newspaper. The Life and Love of Dr. Susan comes to you in addition to the Lux Radio Theater. Heard in tonight's play were Juanita Quigley as Tina as a child, Doris Lloyd as Nora, Jack Lewis as Dr. Lanskell, Fred Shields as Clem Spender, Fred Mackay as Joseph Ralston, Harold Daniels as Lanning Halsey, John Fee as clergyman, Lou Merrill as mate, and Howard McNear as seaman. Loretta Young's current picture is Walter Wanger's Eternally Yours. Miriam Hopkins appears through the courtesy of Warner Brothers Pictures and is now appearing in their production of The Old Maid. Louis Silvers is from 20th Century Fox, where he directed music for drums along the Mohawk. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.